All right, so first of all, I have to say um, massive thank you for inviting me on your channel. I think you're doing great work. I think you're very knowledgeable, knowledgeable about you know football and sports and stuff like that. So thank you for being on your channel. Um, so no, you're you're welcome. Um, I like to echo what you've just said. I'm really like grip every time I hear you on like Ryan LFC or someone else's platform. I'm just like really like engaged and just like <laughs> listening into what you're saying because you talk so much sense and it's refreshing. Literally, I can like have like Ryan LFC like on in the background and like not really looking at the screen. But if mm -hmm. you're there, I can literally, like, my ears are just gripped because you, you're so informative. So I literally I, had to bring you on my platform. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, you would know that I get a lot of bashing from, from what I see on those channels, especially with the whole Tapa thing and, and JFF. But um, as it relates to this game, um, I'd, I'd use the word cautious, cautiously optimistic. Um, I'm not going into this game saying that Jamaica are going to win the game. But obviously, as a Jamaican fan and a Jamaican citizen, I want us to win. But I don't think that we'll have enough to win the game. So as you go further on into the show, we'll get into that. But I don't think that we're going to win this game. Is that, I mean, are you feeling a little bit anxious? Because obviously the USA are the hosts and they will definitely have the 12th man behind them. The 12th man being the spectators. Does that make you feel even more anxious? That is a major part of it, that home advantage and, and the crowd. They're going to be so loud. I don't think Jamaica will be intimidated by the crowd, but it will push the U.S. team on, especially because they're um, so young and they're going to be driving off that whole, uh, what's, what's the word, youthful exuberance and stuff. So I think the crowd will be, play a massive part. Not only that, I think that they'll have more chemistry than us. Um, we 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 were all over the place in terms of getting players in. Ravel Morris who didn't come. He, he was a part of the Saudi Arabia game and stuff. He's not there. Bobby Reed got COVID, so he's gonna be coming back after missing a game and stuff. And and we're chopping and changing a lot. So it's gonna take some time for us to you know get that chemistry. I thought coming into this World Cup that this is all about building chemistry. That's that's been my view all throughout all the channels that I've been on, just to build chemistry for the bigger picture, which is the World Cup qualifiers. That's just my personal thing. I don't think losing this Gold Cup is a massive dent in Jamaica's hope of qualifying for the World Cup because we'll just need this to build chemistry. We can't go into a tournament without having chemistry and just expect to win the thing based off individual brilliance every game. You're right about that. Chemistry is yeah. definitely needed, especially in um, tournament competition. And the USA have put that on display um, throughout their um, group stage. When you look back at a couple of their matches um, against Haiti, they won one nil against Martinique. Uh, I believe they won six one and six. against the uh, against Canada. They won one nil and. Those games, they have actually scored in the early stages of the match and they've managed to stay together collect collectively and see out their um, results. So mm -hmm. that's one thing for the regular boys to be wary of, the fact that they will come at you from the jump. And if they do, you will need to like respond as soon as possible and um, level the scoring. Yeah, exactly. They score so early in the games. I mean, it was 20 seconds against Canada. And I think Canada, they have a better team than us. But Canada couldn't get a goal for the rest of the whole 89 minutes plus. They couldn't score. They created a lot of chances, but they didn't score. And so um, I think we have to be wary of how they press us early on. Um, I think the first game that they played against Haiti was an early goal and the Canada game was 20 seconds. I think that's a record now. So we, we have to watch that and be careful of that. And some of the times during this competition, Jamaica has started so slowly. And, and we can't afford to do that. We can't afford to do that against the United States of America. If you listen to USA fans, they're, they're, they are not even impressed with how their team is playing. They're saying that it's, it's the same thing for us. We're not impressed with how Jamaica are playing and stuff. And they're not as well. They said that, you know, even though they won all three games, it's not been the best performances. And they scored six goals in a game. You know what I mean? So they have high standards. <laughs> And and you know we we they just do have, have high standards. 
No, you're absolutely right about that. They do have high standard. I'm seeing them complaining and saying um, at their group stage, they're saying this is not even our first team, this is our C team. So I'm just like, yeah. well, damn, if this is your C <laughs> team, to be honest, I don't think I want to see your 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 um, your um A team because that is quite frightening. Exactly. I mean, we saw the A team in 2019. They spanked us 3-1 <laughs> with Pulisic and McKinney and all of those guys. So, I mean, they, they're probably right. This is a C team for real. I think um, one of the positives to look on, um, to look forward to is when we look back at, I think it might have been the same year, 2019, when we played them in the friendly where Nicholson scored the um, lone goal and we managed to beat them. I think that's mm -hmm. one of the first times where we saw that we can play attractive football, particularly under Tapper, because I know yeah. he's been in a lot of hot water recently, hasn't he? People say that <laughs> you don't play pretty football, but if you look back at that friendly, yes, mm -hmm. it was a friendly, but we managed to beat the USA and I know a lot of people were jumping for joy. Mm -hmm, exactly. No, that's the thing for me, right? I went, I went on and I did some research for this tournament. And a lot of people, I don't think they look at stats and they complain about us not playing attractive football and Tapa doesn't know what he's doing. And I'm not going to turn your show into a defending Tapa thing. But we have lost we have played what six competitive games in the gold cup against the united states we have lost five and we've won one game against them right no i went through this gold cup just this gold cup specifically and the shots that jamaica have had in the three games that we've played 42 shots for a team that's so not playing attractive football not doing anything we've had 42 shots and 18 of them have been on target. So Suriname, Guadeloupe, Costa Rica. 18 shots on target for a team that's not playing attractive football and not creating any chances and all of these things. And for me, like, that's a lot. Like, if we were just being pragmatic and sitting behind the ball, soaking up all the pressure, like teams like Stoke City have done it in the past. You see them probably have two shots on target for the whole 90 minutes. No, but we're actually creating a lot of chances. You know what I mean? And I, I think that he's been fairly criti uh, unfairly criticized, actually. And the only thing I could criticize him for was the game where Shamar Nichols played so long and he should have brought Andre for that substitution. That's the only thing that I could criticize him for, right? Because looking at all of this stuff and watching the games, we have been creating a lot of chances and we've been missing a lot of chances. 42 shots in total, 18 on tar target. So just, just think about that. <laughs> I do agree with you. Um, going into that match, what would you say should be our style of play in terms of trying to break down the USA? I know you're saying that you're going with a 2-1 to the host. Um, <laughs> yeah. Many will find it difficult to disagree with you, but what would be your approach to break down the USA? I'm saying it comes down to what happens in midfield. So, you know, possibly utilizing the likes of um Leon Bailey and McGee, one on the wing, one in the um center of the park, to try and draw these fouls. Because one thing about the USA, as good as they are as a collective, they mm -hmm. will make a foul if you force them into it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That is definitely true. Um the thing is though, I mean I guess we're gonna go into starting eleven soon. But I don't think I'll be playing McGee in this game. But the for me, watching the USA, they attack a lot on the wings because they th they play three at the back. And I, I remember the game against um, Canada, they were attacking down those wings. And I think it's the, the right wing back that got the goal more, right? Because they bomb forward. And so for me, that's where the, the threat is. So I'm not even sure if Taxi is going to be ready for the game, but even if he is, I'll, I'm going with, with Bell and um, I want Alvis Powell to play the game as well. Because for me, the threat is down the wings and they'll be looking for Zardis or um, DK who are very physical strikers so I think we, we have to, to close on the wings so whoever is playing on the wings will have to help our right back and our left back to defend as well because that three at the back for the USA and those wing backs bombing forward is going to be a major threat I, I agree with you about the midfield and fouling as well 
And that's why I definitely play Hector, but we'll get into the starting eleven. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get into the starting eleven because I know you've blessed me with a moment of your time, but I'm very wary because <laughs> we just have under 10 minutes, so I'm gonna make the most of it. And I yeah, use Mickey good. and um Bailey as two examples because those are the two clear players who are capable of drawing important yeah. fouls. Um, but yeah, yeah. McGee might not be the ideal fit for this game. Um, yeah. because and again, you know, let's look back at the last two, um, the last three games. Um yeah, yeah. at the um, group stage. And let's look at the first two games where McGee didn't play and a lot of people were just angry because they're saying that they want to see the little magician and, yeah. of course, and played him in the final um, group stage. And it did show what he was made of, but obviously we lost that match. And I can't speak for everyone, but I would have loved to have got three points just to build on that momentum going into the um, USA game. So... Would it be a good idea to play McGee just because just just to um get that bit of magic and that bit of chemistry in um midfield, or is it a good idea to say, you know what, based off what we've seen from the last game, you'll have to sit this one out? Yes, yeah, so McGee is going to always be a big debate, and and when it comes to attacking players, um, luxury players like that, it's always a big debate. But for me, he doesn't play based off the fact that he just does not defend well. And playing against this USA team, we need everybody to be a part of the defense. If he loses the ball, he doesn't track back and, and try and win it back. He jogs around a lot. He doesn't throw himself into tackles. I mean, he's a great creative aspect for the team. But mm -hmm. I don't think I'll risk him against the USA team at all. I want us to be defensively solid because they'll be coming at us very hard. And, and I need us to be defensively solid. So I'm like, he doesn't play for me. And I think in defense of what you've said, um, some excellent points being um being made, but I think that just comes down to coaching and development and yeah. for us to like put in put into place a string of games, because that's the only way that make a player like McGee or a players collectively will get better is if we mm -hmm. put in a number yeah. of games like on a consistent um basis just to aid their development. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. But his development will have to wait because this is a do or die thing. And I'm sure he can, if we're losing the game and, and he can come on in the second half and, and show what he's made of because we're chasing the game. But it, he, it has to wait. This is go hard or go home. And I want all the guys with, ex yeah, with experience and the know-how, been there and done that. I need those guys to play this game. I, I can't take the risk. I mean, it's an inexperienced USA team, yes. But I still need the guys who've been there and done that and who've been under pressure before to play this game. McGee is new to the thing. He, he played in the last game because we've already gone through. You know what I mean? So we wanted to see what he's made of. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't risk him in this game. Start. And in terms of... <laughs> and in terms of Leon Bailey as well, of course, we know that he's carrying a slight niggle. So he, we might not even see Bailey um, take to the stage against um, the United States. You think so? M might not, might not. I mean, because because in the last game, of course, we saw him on the sidelines, and then we're hearing that he's been rested or you know training on his own just because of the niggle niggle that he's um carrying. But yeah. for me personally, of course, I'd love to see um Leon in the starting <laughs> eleven. Yeah, listen, if Leon Bailey has one foot, he has to play that game, man. He, he's our talisman. He has to play, and he has not turned up. Um for Jamaica in a lot of the games. And, and I think this is a time that he needs to come with it. It's a broken tool, whatever he has. He has, to turn, <laughs> he has to turn up for us against the United States because I believe his presence alone, like when you have superstar players like that, you, you ha they have to turn up at some point. And I thought in the last game that he played, 65 minutes onwards, we were getting to see Leon Bailey coming to his own. He was taking players on. He had a couple of shots that the keeper had to save. Um, they gave him the assist for Fleming's goal. I mean, Fleming's had to do a lot of work to score the goal, even after receiving the ball. But hey, he got an assist. So um, I'll, I'll definitely hope that Leon Bailey will come good in this game. I, I think that he will play regardless of the, the niggles he might be having just because of his presence. You, you, don't, you don't rest him and bring him on second half. You want your best 11 to start the game to put pressure on that USA team. And they will be mindful about Leon Bailey. They, they'll always have... Remember, they play three at the back. So when their wing backs are bombing forward, Bailey will have a lot of space to run into. 
to attack those um, centre backs. So it's just for him now to just do what he does for Leverkusen and, and just shows that he is Leon Bailey, you know, Bala. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I agree. And in terms of, um, you, you spoke about attack, so let's stay on the topic of firepower and attack. How yeah. do you unsettle this United States team? Because so far we've seen seven different goal scorers. But it's not yeah. a case of you saying, you go out there and mark someone like Moore or you go out there and mark Robinson because you have other players to worry about. So how do you unsettle the holes? All right. So for me, like I said, DK... And Zara, these, these guys are very physical and, and they have speed. But I think Jamaica has two of the best centre-back pairings probably across CONCACAF. I, I'm not even saying that because I'm Jamaican, right? Like Liam Moore and Damian Lowe has been such a presence since they've been playing together and they've formed a good chemistry. And even if we throw Mariapa in there, all of them, I think, are solid enough to um, take care of this attack. But we just have to be careful of the, the wings. That's why I stress the wings. So to unsettle them, I think that Moore and, and, and Lowe are capable of dealing with the strikers. But the right back and the left back, like attack those those wingers are a main threat. Um the right the right wing back and the left wing back for, for the USA team. So we have to try and stop them. I think Bell is just defensively sound, um, a lot more so than Taxi Lawrence's. And Taxi Lawrence always is in an attacking position. And, and if he gets caught out, then we're going to struggle. So I'll go with Bell to counter that um, wing-back presence. And Alvas just has the speed. I mean, he makes mistakes, but he has the speed to, to, to recover. And I, I don't want to see Fisher in this game at all. At all. Like, he, he, he is struggling this game. Yeah. Before you go, I have to ask you, what would be your starting eleven? All right, so yeah, my starting eleven for this game will actually be the, the starting eleven mainly that played against Suriname. So obviously, Blake in goal. I want Alvis Powell and Damian Lowe, Liam Moore, and Bill at the back. So that's pretty much the same team that started against Suriname. I want because I'm going with four. I'm going with four, two, three, one. So I want those four. Then I want. Uh, what's his name? Johnson, Hector, right above those, um, the, the centre backs. So the holding midfielders, and then I want Leon Bailey, Bobby Reed, Turgot. A lot of people will not want Turgot to start, but I want Turgot to start because of his connection with Bill and 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 himself. And then I want Corey Burke leading the line. Um, yes, I, I'm a big Andre Gray fan, but Corey Burke against these MLS players that he knows so well, I, I mm -hmm. want him to play the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't work, I have no doubt in Corey Burke's um, ability. If that doesn't work and we need to make a substitution, who are you replacing him with potentially? Oh, just know that it's not going to be Shamar Nicholson because I'm, <laughs> <bringing, laughs> I'm, really? bringing, I'm bringing Andre Gray on. Um, I just think that he's, he's better. Um, Corey Burke, Corey Burke, Andre Gray, and Nicholson. That's the picking order. I think Nicholson should be third in line to, to start for Jamaica and to play for Jamaica. I mean, he'll get the odd goal here and there, and it might be a spectacular goal, but he doesn't do enough um, interchanging and bringing people into play and all that other off-the-ball stuff that Andre Gray does. I saw Andre Gray running and making slide tackles to win the ball back. Um, he thread passes through. Remember that goal against the USA when he played through, um, what's his name? The winger that's not here anymore. Right? We got the one goal against the USA. He played him through, one, two pass, he got the goal. And he, he just does more for Jamaica than, than Shamar Nicholson does. Okay, um, fair enough. I can't argue with that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, who has been your star player of the tournament so far? Oh, definitely Daniel Johnson. For Jamaica, right? Yeah, I'm quite surprised. I thought you were going to say um, Damien Lowe. No, no. I, I think in terms of consistency, Daniel Johnson has been immense. He's very consistent. He, he does all the right things. Um, he controls the midfield for us. He dictates plays for us. Um, he make, makes those two passes that we probably don't see a lot of sometimes in, in a Jamaica system. And he just shows his quality, man. He's been our most consistent player. And for me... Damien Lowe is a close second. 
<laughs> of all the players who have been brought into the team um, from across the diaspora, the new recruits, who's that one player that's impressed you the most? Um, I, I, I want to say, I want to go with, with DJ again, but um, seeing the impact of, of more with, with, with Damien Lowe, I'm going to go with him. I, I thought that we, we just look defensively solid. And that's not something that we often see with Jamaican football, looking defensively solid and have great center backs. Because remember, we had Claude Davis and those guys. You know what I mean? So those guys were always so rash. And, and our defense just look a lot more composed and cultured. That's a perfect way to find. We look a lot more cultured in defense than we normally do. So I'm going to say um, Liam, Liam Moore. I'm going to agree with you on that one because if you're just watching um, the, the Rega boys um, for the first time this um, tournament, you would assume that um, Liam has been in that team for hey, years. Like, exactly. You would not think that this, this guy is only just linked up with the team, particularly with the senior players, the regular um, starting 11. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would definitely agree with you with that. Um, he's, been a, he's been fascinating to watch and I can yeah. only hope that he will get better. He looks comfortable, committed. Um, he knows what it's all about. He knows what it needs to wear the black gold and green so yep. i could only hope that he will give us more of the same yeah me too I, I totally agree with you and if he was allowed to take free kicks i'm sure he'll be doing well too but <laughs> he, he doesn't get the chance <laughs> before you go i'm glad you have brought that up who should be who should be the designated free kick taker i mean obviously leon bailey uh, with his quality it has to be leon bailey so um him Probably second in line, you'd, you'd try Liam Moore. But Shamar Nichols should be nowhere near it. So, um, yeah, Liam Bailey, Liam Moore. And and from the, the one that um, McGee took, he looks, he looks decent as well. But Shamar Nichols just shouldn't be near any of it. It'd be interesting to figure out um, whose decision it was to uh, make um, Nicholson the designated uh, free kick taker or if, if that's just the player's decision, um, if, if that is the case, obviously some coaching and some direction is needed. So I feel yeah. like this is a topic for a... Um, for, this is a conversation for a, a different day because there's just so yeah. much to dissect from that. Ex so exactly. I know you have to go because I know you have your cricket match. So I want to yeah. wish you best of luck with that. Thank you. Thank you. He's actually downstairs waiting. So I have to run. <laughs> I'm going to let you shoot off. Um, Dee, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. I'm sure we'll do this again in the near future. Um, Like I said, just, you know, it's always a pleasure listening to you because you're so knowledgeable. So I had to you. get you on my channel. Um, I hope you enjoy your cricket match. And more importantly, I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you so much. Again, it's a pleasure to be on your channel and, and I appreciate it. I only enjoy cricket when I win, by the way. But thanks a lot for, <laughs> <laughs> for, for inviting me on your channel. All right. Good luck. You're welcome, Dee. Take care. How important will the 12th man be in this match? Is it all about the host or can Jamaican fans um kind of like, you know, sound them out and be the best 12th man? No, you know, not at all. I don't think we can sound them out. It's a passionate nation, United States. They love football. They will have more people in the stadium, definitely, especially when you look at the attendance for the reggae boy supporter in the last three game in the group stage, it's not much. I don't know if the JFF don't promote it or World Cup don't promote it more, but I'm expecting to see more people in Texas more than uh, more US fans will definitely. They will fully talk. But what we have to do with our experience to try to silence them as early as possible because. They will attack us very quick and we have to kind of slow down the game. We have to approach it like a Jesse Marina tactic. They are quick, they are young, they are faster than us. We have to keep our composure. Keep the ship. Don't let them score in the first 30 minutes. If we can quiet the crowd and quiet the team in the first 35 minutes, we have a great chance to beat this United States. We've seen glimpses of us doing that. You spoke about um Jose and his style is his style of play, and I think Tapa has arguably tried to implement similar style of play, but it obviously hasn't gone down well with the fans because the fans, particularly from the first and the second match at the group stage arm um, level, they were basically screaming out for fancy football. They're saying they want ticket tackle football, but they they did see that in the game against Costa Rica, but. 
obviously the end result was unfortunate because they beat us um one nil just so would you like more of the same would you like him to go with a de defensive approach against usa or is it a combination of giving us the ticket tack of football that the fans want and combining that with um defensive stability well i am a person critical of theodore whitmore with him part of the bus thing i don't really like it but listen Every game you have to approach different. Every game you have to have different tactics. So what really I want the other week more to do, United State team, they score against Canada in the first 15 seconds. They love to finish the game in the first 20 minutes. We cannot approach the game like that, especially against a young United State team. Yes, they are team based in the, United, in the MLS. They are a C team, but they're still pretty decent. But we have to quiet the fans. This is the reason why we can burst out of the block. We have to control the game. We have more experience. We cannot flash go forward. We have to keep our composure and hit them on the break. Whenever we get the opportunity, we have to put it in the back of the net. We have to have boats. We have to have attacking and we have to defense properly. They will have the crowd. The crowd will have a lot of noise in the stadium and they will feed after that. So what we want to do, take the fans out of the game. That's important. And catch them on the break. We have to approach the game different. I agree with you there, but it's not just a case of trying to unsettle them. I think it's also about riding out the game, so staying com compact as a collective. Because if you look at their first three games at the um, group stage against Haiti, they scored in the eight in the eighth eighth minute against Martinique they scored in the 14th minute and then against Canada it took them less than um 60 seconds to to get their opening goal and with the Haiti and the Canada game they both won those matches 1-0 so they're able to score quite early but more importantly they're they're able more than capable of holding on to a lead for an ex for a um extended length of time yeah they are they're not scoring a lot of goal in because most team part the boss and them. I think they only I think they scored six, they beat um I don't remember the team, but they dropped six in the group stage and they're Martinique, four, um six one. Six one and I think they win the next two games. They beat, defeat Canada by one goal to nil. So it's a team what you have to do, just part the boss because they want to play open football. You have to frustrate them. Especially Jamaica, very good in defense. We have a very good goalkeeper, Andre Blake. And then we have Leon Moore, very solid. But it's interesting to see what Theodore Whitmore is going to use in the first 11. But I have my 11, and I think this is the best level to approach this game. You want me to give it? How do you break them down, though, right? Because we, we know they can be pretty fast out the block. Like I've said before, they can hit you on the break at the early stage. But unfortunately, if that's the case, like we've seen against Canada, like we've seen against Haiti, they can hold on to their lead. So how do we break them down? What can we bring to the table that's going to unsettle them and force them to make important fouls and, you know, just, just completely play out of their depth? What I would what I would want Theodore Whitmore to do, especially, do not play the ball out from the back. They are very good at pressing. We don't do well when team press up, press us high up the pitch. So what we have to do, play for the first ball and the second ball. Make the game physical for this United States team. So whenever we kick the ball long, Andre agree with him physicality. We have Corey Berg running off for him, or Leon Bailey running off for him. So that's the way I would approach the game because it no makes sense to play attacking football against them. We are not fit. Clearly the reggae boys are not fit. I probably underestimate the fitness level of the reggae boys, but I see they cannot play right through the 90 minutes with the temper that the United States have. So I would definitely pace quick one-two pass inside the midfield and release Leon Bailey and Corbett. Corbett know the United States team good because he played in the USL, in the MLS. I'm glad that you've touched on um, Leon Bailey because obviously we know by now that all of our players are fit and ready. So that includes the likes of Bailey, who was carrying a niggle, and also Bobby Reed as well. He should be coming back into the um, team. Not sure about the starting 11 because we know, as with COVID, we've heard so many stories that that can take a bit of um, a bit of um, energy out of you. So if he does feature, he might not be as energetic. Um, so that's something that we've got to bear in mind 
fine, but what do you make of Leon Bailey and Bobby Reed being um, available for this match? Well, that's going to be very massive for us. If both of them fit and can play in this game, why not start them from the start? Play them. We have to have a best team. This is our last game. We have to play it like it's a final. This is a final for us. We have to defeat this team. We have to go out there and put in a very good performance. So we need our best player, Leon Bailey, playing from the start and play Bobby Reed. We missed Bobby Reed in the last two games. So he's going to be very important for us going forward. I know you're itching to give me your starting 11. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you who would be your starting 11 for this important match. Well, if everybody fit, this is the team I think Theodore Whitmore should use to defeat this United States team. We have a lot of experience in this starting level, been playing across Europe, so we go with Andre Blake. Many people know him well in the United States in playing the MLS. I will go with Damian Lowe, um, Leon Moore partner. This is our best. We can take something positive from this tournament. Leon Moore and Damian Lowe and Andre Blake, they are the best performance for the reggae boys so far this season, in my opinion. I would bring in the veteran, um, Mariapa. I think we need experience in the team. God, this USA team is very young. So, Mariapa, I think Alvas Poe lost him, um, him spot because I don't think Alvas Poe has impressed me enough in this tournament. And I will go with, um, if Kemar Taxi Lawrence is fit, I will play Kemar Taxi Lawrence at right, at left back, in the midfield. I know. I know for sure. Um, Tapa will go with Maria. Um, Hector, Hector, Daniel Johnson, Bobby Reed, Hoiberg, Gray, and Leon Bailey. Poster boy Leon Bailey. <laughs> Um, let's backtrack and touch on two players that you've mentioned, Mari Yappa and also Big Heck, Michael Hector himself. Do you think Mari Yappa will be selected for this game, though, um, bearing in mind his performance in the last in the last game against Costa Rica and his performance leading up to that goal against Costa Rica? Well, you should. You should. There's no way we can have O'Neill Fisher playing right back or Alvaro Spohl playing right back. They don't impress me. Enough. Mm -hmm. Whitmore is different. He probably play Alva Spoil there. I don't have a problem if he play Alva Spoil there, but we want someone we can more solid hot the back. Alva Spoil is more attacking. He will want to go up and he is not fit enough to get back in position. So Mario Power with him experience, he is going to he will not go further far mm -hmm. too much. And mm -hmm. we don't think we need uh, Maria Pa to go because we don't have Corbrook and Leon Bailey to do that work. So we want to keep it solid. We have Kim and Taxler and flying up. So yeah. mm -hmm. let's touch on Michael Hector as well. How much was Michael Hector missed in that game against Costa Rica? Because we know it Michael is. Hector, he, he has it been, I, I don't need to tell you, he has been the scapegoat. So much so that he's looked very well. He's performed well in the first two opening matches at the group stage. And people were still criticizing him, saying, oh, you know, he's not good enough and so on. But for me, it's the, it's, it's the reverse. I think he's looked well. Um, So for you, how much was Michael Hector missed in the game against Costa Rica? We didn't miss him. I'll be honest with you, we didn't miss him. I think he have an okay tournament so far. Um, he get to ask a job, and I think him doing him job. Okay, we did. We love to see more from him, but Jamaican people are out for please, and we have to understand that they want the best for the team. Some people say he's not good enough, but I think he's a decent player to have with him experience in this team. So I think he's okay, but I think Whitmore will play him in this game. Rest him, in, rest him against Costa Rica, that's a good thing. Especially we're going to play a little bit more. Solid. But if he's, but if, if Kapra is going to play him in this game, then does that not illustrate that perhaps he was missed in the game against Costa Rica? Because if you had had him in the park against uh, Costa Rica, could you not see him trying to play those long balls to break the back line, the back line of Costa Rica, which could potentially have led to a to a goal for us? Yeah, as I said earlier on in the preview, different game, different tactics. And I think he's going to use a defensive 
tactic and Michael Hector will be needing. Onil, um, um, Speedy is a player that loves to, he's a box to box midfielder. He's not going to sit in the hole in midfielder and protect that back four. And that's what Tapa are going to use. He wants someone who's going to stay, not pushing up and leave the space in between the midfield and the defensive. So I think Hector, he will do good. He will do good. And I think this, this team against United States, he must start in the midfield. <laughs> I think you're saying it with a little bit of reluctance there, and I'm kind of liking it. Um, <laughs> who is the player on the on the USA side that you think that we should be wary of? Just to remind everyone that's watching, they've had seven different goal scorers so far. So it's not a case of, you know, go ahead and mark more, because if you mark more, you also have someone like Robinson to um to keep in mind. So who's been like your standout player for USA so far? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't watch USA. I don't watch USA enough, enough. I don't care about USA. I care about Jamaica. I need to silence them and beat them. Sorry, USA fans. I'm not being rude, but I don't care about USA. I care about Jamaica. How we dealing with this USA team? You guys have some okay player. I don't really watch much of USA. Sorry. <laughs> I don't think that's going to go down well with the USA fans, but it is what it is. I think feelings are very mutual when it comes to Jamaica and USA. We don't want to get beat by them and they most certainly don't want to get beaten by us. So I don't think there's going to be any um, offence um, taken when I, when you actually um, think of that. Yeah. When it comes on to the game, a couple more hours leading up to the game, I don't care about USA. <laughs> just need to go and smash them, man. Just need to go and smash them. They disrespecting, they disrespect the Gold Cup by sending a B team. Now I mean, so we need to spank them. We have an A team. We must show that we are the third best team in Kanka Cup. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's my take on it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, can't argue with that. What's the one thing that you've learned from watching um the Reggae Boys so far in the tournament? Well, um, I'll be honest with you, the attacking player, I disappointed in them. Leon, Blatega, Shamar, Andre Grady, and Prado is kind of a little bit. I know we get a lot of chance, but we're not finishing them. But I really disappointed in the attacking player, especially Leon and Shamar, because they are my favorite player on the team. Andre Blake, too. But what I have to say, we can take a lot of positive from our backline. Our backline is our strongest core of this team. If we can build on that, and we know we can bring in player like Ravel Marcian and a few more player inside the midfield, I think we we'll, we will be okay. It's just a matter of time for it to start to be clicking. But for me, Leon Moore, Damian Low, and um, the goalkeeper Andre Blake, I think they are the two outstanding player for the Jamaican team. I think the defense pretty good and I think USA is going to have a warm time to break down this team. Remember I told you that reggae boys fans. <laughs> I think when it comes to the um firepower and you know you've said that we are not capitalizing on our chances and we should be doing better um up top. I don't disagree with you with that, but do you not put that down to the lack of chemistry or the fact that we're trying to build chemistry because the one thing about being a, a forward or a striker is people are very quick to pick up on what you're not doing because essentially your job is to score goals so if you're not scoring goals it's very easy for us to like pick you out um but do you not put that put that down to a lack of chemistry and you know when we don't have a lack of chemistry that obvious that obviously relates to the fact that we have not had as many games um leading up to the um gold cup cup preparation well i would put the blame on the jff not to have their full strength squad in japan i think that was the opportunity miss mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. i mean so i think a nine day camp was good enough i think they should get at least two or one match in america if we're against a smaller team but the chemistry, I could say the chemistry is not there. Most international teams do not get nine days to prepare, unless a major tournament, which we get. How many teams get that? What the reggae boys get, nine days to prepare. But 
No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. Um, sorry to cut you off. I'm not saying that the chemistry is not there. I think the chemistry. I think you've seen glimpses of the chemistry, particularly in the game against Costa Rica. Again, shame about the results, but I think we did see um chemistry in that match. It's just that you need to add to that. It needs to be more than just chemistry. So I'm saying to get the best out of the forwards or your strikers, we're going to need a string of games. Um, obviously the chance is now missed with the gold cup. Um, but most certainly looking to the World Cup qualifiers, we can't take the same approach because it probably won't work out for us in the end. But remember, you know, we create a lot of opportunity. I think Jamaica is the second most creative team in the tournament. We create a lot. Shaman Nichols should easily and level goal. He should collect this goal in boots going on. We create a we create a lot of opportunity, but miss. I can exactly. count them. So exactly. I would say chemistry. I don't think we have player that clinical enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember, Shamar is still young. He have a long way to go. Still need to work on him. In in finishing, I know. Two years from now, he will get better. Remember, he's a striker. A striker is not an easy position to play to finish chance. A lot of pressure on you. And I think he will get better. Andre Gray, we know he's not clinical. He's not clinical. We see that in the Premier League when he were playing for Burnley, when he was playing for Watford. He's not a clinical striker. You know what I mean? With the likes of Mikel Antonio coming in, he's not really a clinical striker. But I don't think he will finish these dinner. The players them getting it. Player like um Kemar Roof, he's a much clinical striker more than any of them. But we get chance, we create a lot of chance. Blade got a lot of people will say he's not having a great tournament. But when you look at Blade he create a lot of opportunity for Hoiberg, Shaman Nicholson, Andre Blake, Andre um Gray. We create opportunity. That's I would I would say that. I was I say we create opportunity. Create a lot. We do definitely um create a lot of opportunities, but it's pointless banging on about the opportunities if we're not finishing them. And like you said, if players aren't eating their dinner, then all those opportunities were created for nothing, if we're being honest. So hopefully in the game against the USA, we're sat here and saying that, you know, it was the complete opposite and players stood up, stood up, to, stood up to be accounted and most certainly buried their chances when, when it comes their way. Yeah, most definitely we should. If we don't do that, we'll be out of the Gold Cup and pressure will on the Federation. I will definitely put my, my, my legs in their neck if they get knocked out by a USA team, especially a CUSA team. What was your expectation actually um, going into the Gold Cup? Was, was, you, was you saying, you know, I want to go all the way or I expect us to go all the way? Or what was your expectation? Oh, well, my expect I, I hear Tapa Whitmore say, my expectation is to win. Mm -hmm. I believe if we don't mm -hmm. win this Gold Cup, I think this is a failure. Massive, massive, massive failure. It's a must. There's no way you can go to the Gold Cup 2015, 2017, 2017 semi-final, 2019 semi-final, 2017 final, 2015 final. I know you have a best team. Not winning the Gold Cup is a failure to me. One is it realistic? Is it is it realistic though? Did you have this opinion before the players went off to do like their nine day camp, or was this after the nine day camp? Like, was is it re realistic with the lack of preparation in mind to say that yeah, my expectation is for them to win the gold cup? Listen, check how much game Costa Rica get. Check how much game Panama get. But how how long how long has Costa Rican as how, how how long has that Costa Rican side been playing together? They're an age side. You know, we we know this. They're very familiar with each other. Remember, we've still got old players from from like some years ago with new additions um brought into this team that's trying to integrate with each other, trying to get to know each other. And obviously, like I've said to you before, the more they play together, the better the chemistry and the better the understanding will become. Not trying to make right. excuses for them, but I'm just trying to like understand like your thought process. Uh, listen to this, right? And this is poor excuse by the Jamaican supporter. Andre Blake has been around the national team for a long time, right? Theodore Whitmore has been around the national team from 2007. Damien Lowe, 
in the last Gold Cup squad. Junior Femins in the last Gold Cup squad. Leon Bailey in the last Gold Cup squad. Tyreek Miggy in the last Gold Cup squad. Kemar Taxi Lawrence has been in the last Gold Cup squad. That's six players already. O'Neill Fisher has been in the last two Gold Cup squads. Speedy has been in the last Gold Cup squad. Andre Mariapa has been in the last World Cup squad. Hector has been in the last World Cup squad. That's 10 players. Are oh, those more? 10 regular hold starting on, hold in on, the hold, on, hold on, hold on. You want more? Shaman Nichols said that's 11. Junior Flemings, that's at least 12 players has been in the national pool. They're in the World Cup squad. There's mm -hmm. every, most of the time when the national team called up. That half a yeah. team, you know? That's half a team. So when people come and telling me this, I have to laugh. Seriously. There's no way we has been having the same couple of player then. Probably one or two changes. Yes, that's understandable, but you have to take into account the number of games that these guys have played together recently. If that's the case, then can I ask you, at club level, what's the purpose of preseason? What's the purpose of preseason? Because if you played together last season and you're the same squad, surely at club level you don't you don't need preseason. You can just skip to the season ahead, right? I understand. I understand. But remember, you know. But do you remember, do you see what I'm trying to to make? I'm not disagreeing with the point that you've the point the point that you've made. Would it on the same level? How many friendly games we have leading up to this school cup? Uh, how many from well recently in the last two months we were supposed to have three right if we're looking at the camp in japan right and in the camp in, the, in the japan you and i know or anyone who follows the the regular boys know that there was severe disruptions there so you couldn't even get the, the team together to to no, no, to no, no. cause that <laughs> a lot of preparation by the federation. no i understand what you're saying but no, but, but we, can, we can continue to give them a pass and say, oh, um, we didn't play a lot of games together. We get the football game. Mm. We get the football game. We play against United States. We play against um, Japan and the 23 team. We play against Serbia. And we have a 90 camp. That's a three game, a lot of game to prepare. You know? Plus, 12 of your player them has been going to the last Gold Cup squad. Come on now, man. Come on, tell our TV. Ryan, it's it's not good enough. It's simply not good enough. You know that's not good enough. You need more than a handful of games to prepare yourself for any competition. It's not good enough, especially with the disruptions that happened when we, right. when they were out in uh All in right. Japan. And even before Japan, there were still disruptions of players not players saying that they're not going to play because of you know pay reasons, contract reasons, and and so on. So the disruptions but have been there long before Japan. But that's the JF fault. No, but that's fault. what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you. That's right. what I'm saying. You, right. you said earlier on that your expectation was for them to win it. So I'm saying, did you consider the the, the realistic situations that we're in, and still say to yourself, you know what? Despite the whole contract situations, despite new players integrating into the team, despite the situation in Japan where we we didn't play against the um Japan national team, we played against Serbia and we played against um against the Japan Olympic team, two out of three matches that we were supposed to play. I'm saying, did you take those factors into consideration and say, yeah, despite all of that, I'm still expecting us to win? Yeah, we still <laughs> supposed to We still. But well, listen, um, El Salvador in the quarterfinal, right? Remember yeah. this year, El Salvador changed their coach and look how they are playing. Mm. Look how they are playing. April, the 21st, mm. they appoint their new manager. And look at mm. El Salvador, how they has been playing. Mexico struggled to beat them. They, they, they finished second in the group with six points. Like us, um, win convincing and play proper football. Mm -hmm. Come on. We don't need eyeglass to see this, man. We have a lot of work to do in the Federation. They need to prepare <laughs> more. Prepare. I'm not going to stop until, I'm not going to stop beat them until it come correct and proper. My son coming up 10 years from now, he will play for the national team. You think I want him to play for the national team with this 
Bangarang no change. Remember, you know, this has been going on for 20 years from how I was young, from how I was in the system, and nothing has been changed. So we need changes, and we and the YouTube brother, we see changes, we see a few things they start to post on Twitter and Instagram, more active. We have to pressure them. What about the YouTube channel? This, this thing is bigger. This thing is bigger than this thing is bigger than the JFF because we have a YouTube channel. The JFF will be a YouTube channel, right? Two years since they upload on it. What about the new player them coming into the team? What about doing interview with them? Make the Jamaican people know them. Make some of the people we um play, new player them coming in. Market the player them properly. Do all of these stuff. Why we don't have a merch store online? Why Costa Rica selling it in the car park outside of the gate? Some of these things we have to take in category. We keep in balling about money. All we're doing to make money, to make the thing better, to give Theodore Whitmore the backing where he's supposed to need. A lot of things need to talk about. But wait till this World Cup finish. I'm going to doing a few more stuff. I'm glad that you've ended on that because you've just said it. I'm not sure if you realized it, but you said giving Tapa the backing that he needs. So I don't know what's going to happen against USA, but Mr. Ryan LFC, I'm going to pick you up on that comment. All right. All right. <laughs> Ryan, what is your prediction once more? Just to remind the viewers and the watchers, what prediction are you going with? Two one Jamaica. Two one Jamaica. Who are your goal scorers? Shaman Nichols to come off the bench and give us the winner, and Corey Burke. <laughs> Fascinating. Why? Why Nicholson? I'm actually quite surprised that you said that. Um, bearing in mind that he wouldn't have started in your starting eleven. Because um, I think he's. One of the few strikers that play for Jamaica will get so much chance. People think he's a bad striker. Mm. Andre Gray don't put himself in the right position to score chances. And Nichols always find himself in, in the position. He just needs to just focus and put them away. I think he have a high for the goal. And I think the bashing, I know him personal and I know him going to strive after that. He love when pressure, he love when the fans are off, uh, on him back. He strive after that. So I think he will come off the bench. And I think United fans scared of Shaman Nichols. I think he will come off and break the heart. Right. Do you want to go back and alter your starting eleven? Do you want to put Nicholson in your starting eleven instead of Andre Gray? No, I will have Andre Gray. Remember, you know, we have <laughs> to have we have to have a strong team, you know. And what I love about the Reggae Boys team, this tournament, different, different players step up and scoring football, scoring goals. So, yeah, he will come off the bench as a super sub. That's the goal that break American heart. But Rai, it's, it's contradicting because if you're saying that he gets himself in better um position as in he's, he's more positional he has his positional awareness is better than Andre Gray then, surely that would mean that he's the better option to go with no right am i wrong maybe i'm just reading into what you're saying like um incorrectly the reason why andre gray start better when him come when him come on he don't give us nothing he better when him start shaman nichols will give you both he better when him start if him come off the bench he will still give you that like he start so right you, you have to start nicholson then because either way, it doesn't really matter. One, you said you've picked up on his positional awareness, which I think is a very fair judgment of you. Um, go on. You know, I believe Whitmore is going to play Nichols. But the system, oh, I want a team to set up. I want him to hold up the ball. I think he hold up the ball much better than Shaman Nichols. Shaman Nichols is an all-rounder. You understand? So we're going to eat it long. We're going to need. Remember, you know, America didn't play against Gray. They never see something like this, especially in this tournament. So I would start Gray and Shaman Nichols to come off the bench. Forcing okay. it in my mind, but I'm going to stick it what I have. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm just testing you because you're 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 giving me some gems to like play with. So I'm just testing you to see maybe you might consider changing your mind strictly based off what you've said. No, no, no. I will stick it. I'll stick it. I'm sticking up. <laughs> okay, there you have it. Mr. Ryan LFC is going with 2-1 Jamaica against the USA in the quarterfinals. It will be I'll be jumping for joy. I think every Jamaican football fan will be doing the same if we can manage to just stump out the host at home, on home soil. Um, will it happen? That remains to be seen. If you think we're going to beat them, drop a comment and let me know.